All right. Yay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to the virtual campfire. My name is Sydney Williams. I am your host. This is virtual campfire number 37. And we are live at my favorite sandwich shop in San Diego, the Beach Hut Deli in Rancho San Diego. Big thanks to Tyler and the team here for letting us set up shop. Uh, jack some Wi-Fi and some power. We have been parking at the Reggae Ranch, as you guys know, um, when we're not on tour and not on an adventure. And the last three days, it has been windy, like in excess of 80 miles per hour. So every call that I've been taking, I've been like, sorry, guys, I'm just like surfing in the van here. Um, so thankfully, the wind has died down. It's not raining. It's not half snowing. Um, and it's a new day. Yesterday was a new day in America. Today is a new day for the virtual campfire. So Let's get into it. Um, a quick update before we get started here. We are going to be talking up to Julie Kiefer, who is the founder of the Diabetic Travelers Network, as well as Kareem Israel, who is the frontman and lead vocalist for Arise Roots. That is our lineup for tonight. And before we jump into our first interview, a quick update on Take a Hike Diabetes. If you're unfamiliar, we are on a mission to hike a million miles for diabetes awareness this year. And we are crushing it, guys. Like, I'm not even lying. So we have 68 people signed up. And so far, as of right before this broadcast, we have logged 4,482 miles towards our million mile goal. So that is amazing. Um, if you've been paying attention for the last few weeks and you're like, wow, everybody really started hiking this week. That is true. And also, we have rolled in our January, our November numbers from 2020 for the original Take a Hike Diabetes program. That was for Diabetes Awareness Month, and we were going to use that as our starting line for 2021. Now it is part of our count, so we are at 4,482 miles logged so far, and we have raised $3,120. So thank you to everybody that has already registered to join us. Um, we have a lot of exciting stuff coming up this year for Take a Hike Diabetes. We are sending out our first round of prizes starting tomorrow. So if you haven't registered yet, now's a great time to start. Um, we have registration fees that start at $15 and then at $35 raised or donated, you receive our glow in the dark Nalgene water bottle. At $50, you get the sweet, sweet, sweet glow in the dark hiking my feelings, take a hike diabetes hat. At $100 raised or donated, you get a t-shirt that I wore last week, super cute, bright blue, take a hike diabetes logo on the front, a little love note on the inside. And at $250 raised, you get a hoodie, which is so cozy. It's like this one, but it has the take a hike diabetes stuff on it and it is blue. And then new prize, we have a $500 donation or fundraising um, prize tier. And now if you do that, you get an annual membership to the Summit Circle. So that is our membership program that is opening on February 1st. You can learn more about that at hikingmyfeelings.org. When you go there, you're going to see the thing that says sign up to learn more. And we will send you information as soon as we start to open registration for that. We have plans starting at $11 a month, going up to 33 And then that annual membership includes your VIP virtual campfire access. So that means that you get to join our live broadcast every week and be part of the recording and the broadcast itself, which gets in the chat. And then you get to talk to our guests and you get to participate in our group gratitude circle and you get cool prizes from our sponsors and partners. I'm going to get to that in a second because we have one and I'm really excited to tell you about it. And when you are a virtual or when you sign up for the Summit Circle, we also do weekly family gatherings and those are by affinity groups. So we have groups that support people that are sober and sober curious. We have LGBTQIA+. We have um, a space for BIPOC adventure seekers hosted by our director of social responsibility, Gabaccia. We also have a weekly planning and safety meeting with none other than Mr. Barry Williams, my partner in crime, Adventure Buddy for Life. He's going to tell you how to stay safe out on the trail. He is trained as a wilderness EMT, so that means he knows how to save your life if something goes bad and can help you be safe on the trail. So that's really exciting. Those are some of the perks. We also have a really sweet gift pack for people that sign up for an annual membership. And you also get access to our Blaze Your Own Trail to Self Love monthly workshops. It's a whole big thing. It's all community all the time. And it's wonderful. So check that out at hikingmyfeelings.org. If you haven't signed up for Take a Hike Diabetes yet, you can do that at hikingmyfeelings.org slash diabetes. And to talk a quick little shout out and a quick sneak peek for our sponsor, because we have one. <laughs> So starting, um, join us on February 4th. That's not next Thursday, but the Thursday after to meet our friends 
from Ross Chocolate. So what is Ross Chocolates? It is sugar-free chocolate and it is delicious. So they sent us some to try because I don't talk about anything I don't absolutely love and want to eat all the time. Um, so Ross Chocolates is our first sponsor and we are so grateful for their support. And in February, because hello, Valentine's Day, Galentine's Day, whatever you celebrate, general love, candy, that kind of thing. But we want to make sure that your blood sugar is not going through the roof when you get your prizes. So their sugar-free chocolate is also gluten-free, low-carb, GMO-free, keto-friendly, and every sale supports diabetes research. So we're going to be sending you three um, little bars here, and we'll show you all of that when we get there. That's going to be on the 4th, so stick around to meet our friends from Ross Chocolates. And yeah, so that's what we got for updates this week. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce my first guest, Julie Kiefer, who is originally from France and is also dialing in from France. You guys, it is midnight and she is on Zoom with us. So like, let's give a big warm welcome to Julie. Um, she is based in London. She founded the Diabetic Travelers Network in 2019. Julie has been living with type one diabetes since 1997. As an avid traveler since 2015, she has visited 28 countries and has lived in Australia, Indonesia, and the United Kingdom. Julie says, I have a big vision that every diabetic, no matter where they are in the world, will be able to have access to the information, level of care, support, and connections they need to travel and live without worry. No more keeping children from school trips, no more stress at the airport, no more I can't do it attitude. A place where we empower each other to go further, better, together. The DTN is a social impact business that helps people living with diabetes to see their diagnosis to see that their diagnosis does not prevent them from living a life of freedom through traveling the world. It provides people living with diabetes with the knowledge, support, and connections they need to travel without worry. She says that you can do anything you want in life if you believe that you can, and do not let diabetes stop you. So, Julie, welcome to the show. Excited to have you here. Hello. All the way from France. <laughs> Hi. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you. So um, tell us a little bit about your diagnosis story. I would love to hear a little bit about who you are and what was life like before you were diagnosed. And then how did you find out that you had type 1 diabetes? Right. So I was diagnosed at the age of four. So to be honest with you, I don't really remember my life before the diagnosis. Um, is it a good thing or not? I don't know. But I think to me, I was diagnosed at the age of four and I remember that um, my life was kind of dictated by other opinions from a very little age to what I couldn't and cannot do, like what I can eat, what I cannot do, and all of this. And I think this gave me this strength in myself to actually show people that I can do whatever I want. And I, I think like for everyone listening that has diabetes, um, take it as a strength because you guys are doing this every single day on top of everything else that you do. So you deserve a bit of credit for that. Yeah, I, I say all the time, I think people with diabetes, especially type one, um, are just absolute superheroes. It's amazing. Um, between the anxiety of what it's like to live with diabetes and all the things you have to think about on a daily basis. And then, like you said, on top of everything else that goes on in everyday life, it is a lot to manage. So, um, so tell me a little bit about how the DTN started and what is it? Like I introduced it, but like, tell me about your vision for it and what is it as it stands right now? Right. So um, we, the vision for the DTN is really, so I've been traveling, as you say, um, in 28 countries, right? But my first trip was in Australia. It was in 2015. And when I planned it to go there for like six months, I really struggled to find information. It was very difficult. And I really had nobody to talk to. Like I talked to my doctor or that was it. I really had to face my fear of like, what am I going to do about? How am I going to do if I don't have insulin and all those questions alone? So that's one of the reasons that the DTN started like to think to arrive in my head. And then I went to Australia and I traveled well, around all those countries. And then I realized there were a clear gap of knowledge and equality in terms of, you know, depending on where you are in the world, and I'm in France, why right? the healthcare system is completely different than in the US. And I really want DTN to be this place where everyone can come to find the information they need to travel without worry. And this independently of, you know, what they have access in their country and what the government is providing. So I really want to create this and also have this community where we can all come together and empower each other. 
I am so thankful for this. And I was reviewing some of the resources that you've um, so graciously shared with us for anybody that is not already enrolled in our 30 day take a hike diabetes program. Definitely sign up because we are sharing an enormous amount of resources from Julie here. Um, so we've got a travel checklist. We've got a guide for like how to get through airports, especially in light of COVID. One of the things that I didn't realize, Julie, was if you're wearing an insulin pump or a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor, that you don't want to go through an x-ray machine. Could you talk no, you a little want, yeah. could you talk a little bit about that? So basically uh, when you go through the airport security, if they want you to go to the x-ray machine, you can ask for a pat down. Because otherwise, if you look at what the manufacturer are saying, it can destroy the pump like they haven't proven it. So it's not don't go in there, just request the pad down. They have to allow you to have it. And I always say, like, get with you like the later from the doctor that say that you have diabetes and that you need to have your supply with you. So then you can straight at the entrance, show it to the security agent and they're going to, to, to do what is good for you. Have you had any instances in the airport where they gave you a hard time for having supplies or having, um, are you on a CGM or a pump? I have the CGM now, but I didn't have it um, for long. I never had any issue. The only issue I had with supply was when I went to Australia, I didn't took medical approved ice bag. So for everyone listening, this is my top tips all the time because I had those ones that you can open and put the water in and they took it from me. So that left my insulin with nothing, like no ice for like the 24 hour flight to Australia. So at the time I was quite panicked, but actually I realized insulin is more resistant than I thought. Um, drastic change of temperature, more a problem of like keeping it longer for at ambient temperatures. That was fine. It didn't have any problems, but if you want to avoid this issue, just bring medical approvals by. It will make your life easier. Yeah. So what is your favorite place that you've traveled? And is that, so when you're, I have a friend who is also living with type one and he does long distance backpacking trips, like out in the wilderness. And so he always says that diabetes is a part of it, but it's not the star of the show. Have you gotten a system down now to where diabetes isn't the top of mind all the time? Are you able to live without being like, oh my God, my diabetes all the time? Yeah, so basically what I do is I really prepare for my trip and I organize so that make me feel more confident about it. So if you know, like you plan all your supplies, you have enough of it, you know what you're going to do and where you're going to eat, then that's fine. I mean, now I travel and I always say to people like focus on you're going on holiday, like you don't want diabetes to be there in the middle, stopping you from doing things. And also, yeah, when you change environment and there is time difference, the blood sugar is going to go up and down for a bit, but that's okay. I mean, it cannot be perfect and you can only do the best you can. So yeah, just enjoy a bit. So what are some things that you recommend people bring with them or prepare for a trip? Is so, there like uh, a, a little kit that they could make that they could bring with them that would make life easier? I'll say double uh, the supply. You need a letter from the doctor saying like, you know, that you need to take the plane. You need a prescription because you don't want to be, if you need anything abroad, it's good to have that. Um, the medical approved ice bag, I always take a little isotherm bag where I put all my supplies in there and I take it with me on the plane. So that's very helpful. I'm trying to think what else, but I think that's it. And then in terms of packing. You, you know, like it's a lot. If you, when I went for six months, I have half of my suitcase with diabetes. <laughs> and I know, so a little bit about like the cost of diabetes supplies. I saw that you posted a story yesterday that it was quite expensive. You had just stocked up on some supplies. Um, what is your view and hope for access to insulin and more affordable access to diabetes supplies? Well, to me, insulin is a human right. I think like we should like, make it access for everyone the way we do that is like you know it's depending on the healthcare system but coming from france i never had to pay myself for it it's deducted from your salary but you don't pay anything but now that i live in the uk when i go to france i have to pay up front so you can see and i think it's good to people to realize because there is a huge inequality of the 
of the cost. And when you compare the cost of insulin in the US compared to like basic, the water, for example, is, is crazy. I'm really supporting type one in, international in their, you know, fight for equality. I think, uh, yeah, everyone, we need to, to fight for this. Yeah, I, I would also agree that insulin is a human right. If you need it to live, I feel like that should be provided without question. Um, so are you familiar at all with the healthcare in the US? Mm, all I know is that you have to pay an insurance that from what I've heard is quite expensive. And if you don't have the job that supports you in there, or if you have to pay for yourself, it's very expensive. I'm also aware that some people have to ration their insulin and to be to me coming for Europe, this is outrageous. Like that's why I want that, you know, with DTN, we also um, support this movement and push them forward. Yeah. So your, your analysis is correct. You have to pay for everything here. Um, and personally, I haven't had health insurance since the beginning of 2019. And I haven't had an A1C test done since October, 2018, because I can't get that unless I pay out of pocket, which I can't afford to do. So for the people, since our audience is primarily from the U S could you explain how going to a doctor's appointment and getting your supplies worked when you were in France? And then could you explain how it worked when you were in the UK, just to give people a little bit of an insight into what it's like to have healthcare provided in different ways in different countries? Yeah, sure. So in France, basically you go to the doctor, so you go to your generalist, but you choose your diabetologist. So you go there and then you, you pay for your, you give you, you have a card that you give and that's it. And then the social health care pay for it. When you have diabetes, you have something called um, is a hundred percent cover. So if you have diabetes and you have this hundred percent cover, you don't pay anything. Like there is even like dentists, I'm allowed to go once a year to the dentist and it's all covered. You don't need to have a complementary cover for it. So that's why I think France is very good for that because also you can choose your doctors. In the UK, you go through a system called NHS, again, completely free. You choose your GP, but then the rest you don't choose. So it's a bit more complicated to get um, supplies there. For example, for the freestyle libre that I have here, I've been on the waiting list in the UK for a year before they gave me access. In France, my doctor just write the prescription the next day I get it. Wow. So... You don't have to pay anything when you go to the doctor. There's a lot of misconceptions, I think, about socialized medicine in the U.S. We're like, oh, well, you must be broke because you pay so much taxes. Like, are are you broke? Like, it seems like you have a roof over your head. You have food in your belly. Like, I I think a lot of people, I think we try to tell ourselves a lot of different stories to make it sound like we shouldn't move to that model. But from everything I've heard from everyone I've met who lives abroad, um, it sounds like we're a little bit backwards on the way we do healthcare here in America. Um, I think the system works differently. When you work, it's deducted from your salary. But like, I'm working, I'm paying for um, my parents, if I can say, and the generation behind me is kind of paying for me. It's like everything is going into a common fund and everyone kind of gets it. Of course, I'm sure the government has a big debt because of that, but it's the way it is. It's just so interesting. Um, on that note, anybody in the Zoom chat have any questions about diabetes or healthcare or the Diabetic Travel Network before we uh, start talking about some other stuff here? If you do, go ahead and pop on your camera or ask in the chat. In the meantime, We've got a big truck. We're live at the Beach Hot Deli where apparently it's trash day. So ding, ding, here we go. <laughs> oh boy, that's fun. Well, Julie, well, hey. Uh, hey, there we go. Hit it. Hey, I just wanted to say, um, Julie, that, uh, and everyone, but Julie, um, thank you for fighting the good fight for, the, for a basic human right to have a, a medicine and um, for teaching people to fight for their human right to have medicine and to bring awareness around it because the idea of rationing um, insulin, uh, I just became aware, more hyper aware of the idea of rationing insulin when 
things were going kind of nuts here and people were hoarding all sorts of things in the US and probably elsewhere. And the whole idea of that really like, it struck me uh, as um, uh, people not, not um, helping their fellow humans stay well be well, be healthy, have their right to medicine. And so, and that's, that's been a constant theme for me because I believe in other types of medicine that people should have rights to as well, plant medicine. So I just, thank you for fighting the good fight. And I, and um, I probably will have more questions for you when I get, dig a little deeper into um, your, your story and your network. And uh, I'll try to connect with you in another way, but thank you for being here. Thank you, sweet. And yeah, definitely anyone that wants to connect with you, um, you can connect with me on Instagram. That's no problem. Yay. Thank you, sweets. Oh my gosh. I just, it's, it's kind of wild how, um, how, yeah, like <laughs> I was thinking, in which saved your life. Like, can you tell people who are listening what is insulin and what role does it play in your body as a type one diabetic? Because I think a lot of folks don't know what it is and why it's absolutely ridiculous that people are having to ration that. Yeah, definitely. So insulin is an is the hormone that basically um, when you eat food, it's transformed into sugar and the sugar go into your blood and to um, go from your blood to the organs that needs it, it is insulin. So insulin is kind of the key to the door. And when you have type one, your body don't produce insulin because the beta cell of the pancreas have been destroyed by your immune system usually. So you need insulin injection every time to, to, to do that. And if you don't have it, then you have high blood sugar and that's very dangerous because it can lead to uh, many complications and to death basically. That's why insulin is very, very important for us. So it's kind of like if we were like rationing oxygen. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because it's as cru it's as crucial to being alive as the air we breathe. That is wild. Um, so, what were some of the challenges and changes that you experienced in 2020? What were you planning on doing um, before all the travel restrictions started? Well, I plan to do a full road trip, starting by leaving a few months in Spain and then going to Peru. Uh, doing South America, a bit of LA, and I wanted to do a new year in Bali. I stayed in London. <laughs> but you know what? This really made me realize, like, really being grateful for the little thing. Even, like, you know, hiking, my feeling is all about being outside and connecting with nature. And I love being outside and being in nature. And we were locked down there and we cooled in. Like, I was lucky I have a garden, but, you know, it really amplify the fact that the little moment of life, the one that sometimes we take for granted are the most important that we have. Absolutely. And so what was the plan for the Diabetic Travel Network in 2020? And did that change because of the pandemic? Well, I was planning to expand and like creating a lot of content of like the travel that I was planning to do. And we were always focusing on the community, but we had to organize more um, online events. So kind of online meetup to like have the community coming together a bit like you are doing really with the Zoom. So that's what we've been, we've been doing mostly and online activities because that's where we, we had to be. So are you planning to travel at all this year in 2021? Um, well, I'm planning to. Is it going to be possible? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm stuck in France at the moment. Oh, I tough mean, day. Stuck in France. <laughs> I mean, it's good. No, no, I'm not complaining. I'm yeah. happy. But we will see. If I can, I will go for sure. Were there any lessons that you learned in 2020 um, that you'd like to carry with you into this year? Um, I'd say that in every difficult situation, there really is an opportunity to grow and it really depends on the mindset you take when you look at it. And I want to focus on looking for solution and following the heart forward. I like it. Very cool. So you said you like spending time outside and this is the virtual campfire. So do you have any stories? If we were sitting around an actual campfire and we just got done with an adventure. Do you have any stories of spending time outside, whether that's 
with diabetes or without diabetes that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, I can share. I went to New Zealand and I took this hike, which is um, basically you hike the Mont Tongariro under the snow. And I didn't expect it. I saw it was like a little hike under the snow, but then they start giving us, you know, those, I don't know how you call it. Um, the the we had ice the, axe? Yeah, the ice axe and the crampon and everything. And I was like, what am I doing? And so we went and we walk all around. And then the guy, the guy's like, few people left. I was like already thinking, what's happening here? And then the guy said, well, we cannot continue. We had to climb like this. And so I start climbing like this. And then I realize I'm low. So I, I put the ice pack on the snow. I eat my biscuit. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> and then we start again to the top. And it was, it was such an amazing adventure. But, you know, I didn't really, I really expected it would be like a, a Sunday walk somewhere. <laughs> and then they're like, here's your ax. So maybe not so much like a Sunday walk. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, <clears throat> so for... One of the things that we're focusing on in 2021 is building out more resources for people with type one diabetes in particular, so they can start to prepare um, for outdoor adventures and going on trips and stuff. Do you have any recommendations for anybody who's like, they're living with type one, they've never been out for a hike and they're just going to go out for like a, a, a day hike. Do you have any recommendations for uh, products that you like as far as like quick acting sugars and stuff like that, that they could bring with them? Yeah, so I love taking like cereal bars or like kind bar. I like this one. It's good. Um, in terms of, I, I really bring like cube of sugar because if you're really low on the hike and I, I personally reduce my low acting insulin because, you know, you're going for the day, you know, you're going like to exercise. So it's good to, to well, I reduce it. Um, so it helps you go through it or like fruit, you know, nice dry fruit. Yes. I love dried fruit. That's like my, one of my favorite things. I always bring dried mangoes on my hikes. No, I love them. So delicious. Um, all right. So let's do, uh, let's do something here. Everybody that's in the zoom, go ahead and pop on your camera. We're going to, we're just going to do like a little fireside chat here and we're just going to kind of share some stories. So if anybody here, hi everybody. Hi, Laura. Hey, hi Maureen. Hi, Mary. So we're just going to pretend like we're around a campfire because like we haven't done this in a while. Like we usually wait to the end to put on all of our cameras and stuff. So uh, Maureen, how's your week been? Do you have any stories that you want to share with us? We're around a fire. Any questions for Julie? Hey, Julie. I don't think that I have, well, I don't think I have any questions, but I'm so interested that you want to help people travel and travel safely in different countries. I think that's so wonderful. Like, I think that's such a great, a great thing to do for everyone. My dad does have type two diabetes and he does not necessarily take care of himself very well. So it's just interesting to hear like what you're saying and where he could end up possibly. So, you know, like I, it, it's just nice to hear that there's places out there that, that people can connect and they can do it safely and they can feel comfortable that they don't have to feel like they can't leave their home or leave far. You know, I think that's wonderful what you're doing really. It's Thank amazing. You. And an international community at that, like a lot of stories to be heard and shared from a bunch of different perspectives. I think that's probably one of the things I'm most excited about learning more about is just, especially from the healthcare side is hearing more stories from people that live in other areas because it does feel like it's just so violent and difficult to get what you need here. So it's nice to hear that other countries have it figured out and maybe there's models that we could look to, to make things more accessible. Mary, how's your week? You go hiking every week with some uh, ladies on Wednesdays. How was your Wednesday hike? Oh my God. It was, it was really good. I felt really strong after our big hike on Monday and they always beat me to the top of this hike and I felt, so I was asking them when we got to the top, I said, you know, like, how do you, how are you feeling this last stretch? Cause the last half mile or so was just really tough. And, you know, I'm like, are you just cruising right up to the top? Cause they seem totally fine. So I was like, you know, what, how are you feeling physically, emotionally? And they've been doing this hike for 12 years or 70 years old. And they did say like, you know, it's, it's still tough. It, it never gets easy, but it gets easier. So 
that was a nice little mantra that I'm going to keep reminding myself that it's not going to get easy, but it will get easier. Oh, I like that. I also wanted to share, I, um, on our hike the other day, Michelle recommended a local CSA for like a produce box from a local yeah. family farm and mine arrived today and I'm totally obsessed with it. Wow. I don't know if you can see all this, but there is so much in here. So many fruits and vegetables. Some of these, I don't even know what they are. So I can't wait to learn and discover and all of this and more. I put away some of it. There's some more in here. It was only $25, including the delivery fee, which I think if I bought all that at my local grocery store, it would have probably been at least $50. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Box type things. Or is this an, an American journey we're on here? <laughs> oh, no. All right, Laura, what you got going on this week? How is, uh, how's life? You're a math teacher. Uh, Any yeah, fun adventures? Yeah. <laughs> um, life is good. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Teaching online is, first of all, teaching math in general is always an adventure, but teaching math online is just next level. So yeah, there's that. Um, but I did, uh, want to share, I'm a type two diabetic and I've been insulin dependent for a few years. Um, and I, acknowledge the fact that I am very lucky to have health insurance through my husband's uh, job. Um, but they, you know, it, it's always seems like it's always something with my supplies or with, you know, what they're making me pay. Um, recently, uh, all my prescriptions have gone to, uh, they're forcing me to buy a three month supply at a time. So for insulin, that means I shell out over $200 for my insulin supply uh, every three months. So, you know, it's just, yeah, wow. something that I have to have to save up for. And I know it's going to be a bill that that comes in. Um, so yeah, the, there's that. And it's always a struggle. But um, you know, for hiking, I just, I have a kit that I put together, much like what Julie was talking about. I have my test strips. Um, I have my little fast acting tablets. Um, and what else do I have? Uh, just, and I carry it, I throw it in my backpack and I take it with me. Um, and so if I do have to test, although I recently got a continuous monitor, um, which is very helpful too. But yeah, you just figure out, you know, you just learn what to, what to take with you. But I haven't traveled uh, through an airport with a lot of my supplies. So, you know, when that comes up, I definitely know where to look for, for resources for that. So yeah, thank you. Hey, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing. So um, Julie, where are people able to connect with you and what do you have coming up as far as virtual gatherings that people can join? So the best way to connect is through our Instagram is diabetes. Um, I need to, I'm going to write it in the group. Perfect. So everyone can get it. Diabetic travel network. Oh, interesting to me. Up, so that's our Instagram. That's the best way to connect with us. We also have a, a Facebook group. So you're more than welcome to join it. That's where the community is going. That's where I run live events and uh, where we organize and share also the Zoom. So sometimes we do gathering and we do like um, DTN, like international meeting all around the world and people kind of share their travel story from wherever they are. That is so cool. So that's cool because you hear from people like from everywhere in the world. That's really interesting. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. Thank you for sharing that. So folks, you can find Julie and the Diabetic Travel Network at Diabetic Travel Network on Instagram. I'm going to let you get to go, to go to bed. Does anybody have any questions for Julie before we let her leave? Because it's well past midnight in France right now. <laughs> Anyone? Jody, good. Nice to see your face. Thanks for joining us. All right. All right.
was a blast. Yeah, no worries. All good. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Julie. It's great to chat with you. And yeah. And for everybody that is um, not yet part of the Take a Hike Diabetes program here at Hiking My Feelings, you can sign up at hikingmyfeelings.org slash diabetes. We have a ton of great resources um, from Julie, some worksheets, some check sheets, some other things to just keep you informed and keep you safe when you're traveling with diabetes. So Julie, thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of your evening and a wonderful weekend. And um, I hope to hear from you soon. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure to see all of you and to be here. Let's keep connected. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, cool. So if everybody could do cameras off and mute again, then I will do a quick update here on on the uh, Summit Circle, which was one of our membership programs that we mentioned. Um, We're starting here next month. So on February 1st, the Summit Circle opens and a little bit about this program. I'm really excited about it. So this year, or well, last year, we had to pivot a lot. So we were looking at 2020, we were supposed to go around the US and Canada. And obviously, that didn't happen because of COVID. So we had to look and see how we can change what we're doing and make everything um, kind of work (laughs) without, uh, being able to do things in person. A lot of the traction and fun that we had on the road was because we were getting people off their devices and into the wilderness. And now that's not really possible as much as it used to be. So we had to really pivot. So we started our program called Blaze Your Own Trail to Self Love, which is a 12 week intensive. And that started our second class of that started, um, earlier this month on, uh, January 3rd. And so we're on week three and our uh, cohort for this class is just absolutely amazing. And it's so much fun to watch everybody grow and share and connect. And we also offer that program as a self-paced program. And so as a function of the Summit Circle or as a function of the Blaze Your Own Trail program, we had smaller groups called Summit Circles where everybody could just kind of get together each week and share and relate and um, support each other and talk about the work and talk about life and everything that's going on. And when the blaze your own trail to self-love ended last summer, I was like, we should keep the summit circles going. Cause like a lot of people like connecting in this way. So we did. And so we had a group that stuck around and kind of helped us build this out. We did a little book club and then we did some virtual, a little virtual hike. And we showed up at for each other every Monday. And it was this really awesome community. And I was like, you know, I love this. And selfishly, I hope that it could stay just us because I really like what we're building here. And also if this has been so beneficial for the people in this program, I want everybody to have access to this. So on February 1st, we opened the doors to everyone. The Summit Circle used to be um, exclusively for people that were alumni of our Blaze Your Own Trail to Self Love program, but now we have it open to everybody. And so we're really um, excited about this opportunity to share this with you. And so starting February 1st, we have three different ways that you can sign up. The virtual campfire VIPs that you saw on screen earlier, these are all folks that are in our programs or our donors, and they have access to join us for the live broadcast and recordings of the virtual campfire. So they get to jump in on the pre-chat before we go live. We stay live or after we uh, end the broadcast, we have a chat after the show. We have the Q&A with the guests. We have our group gratitude circle and we have some prizes from our partners and sponsors. So virtual campfire VIPs did each week. So that's on Thursdays. And then another uh, per- perk of this program is our, our summit circle affinity group. So I mentioned this at the beginning of the program today, but we have a, a week gathering several um to start on about spirituality which is led by Wilbram Nyeth and she is um really so every other Tuesday we meet and alternating with Beth's meeting at the same who if you've been tuning into the virtual campfires since they started you're familiar with Mary's face she's based in San Diego with us and she is wonderful and I'm very excited to have her leading a group for people that are sober and sober curious as that has been a big part of her journey in 2020. And it's just been nice to have some space where that kind of stuff can be explored. And as a wellness organization, that is something that we definitely want to promote if you are interested in that journey for your life. And we also have a group with Gabachia called the Global Majority Hour. And that is for people that are Black, Indigenous, and people 
of color, adventure seekers to find community and healing together in the Hiking My Feelings family. And alternating with that every other Tuesday, we have a group called, uh, well, it doesn't have a name yet, but it's for people that are LGBT. And they, um, our friend Josh, who is also AKA Miss Buffy Wild. If you tuned in to our first round of the virtual campfire, you may remember Miss Buffy Wild. She rounded us out on episode 20 with drag queen tarot. Um, so Josh is going to be leading the LGBT group every other Tuesday. And then, as I mentioned before, on Monday, Barry, our tour manager, wizard, co-founder, my adventure buddy for life. He is joining us and leading a planning and safety meeting every Monday. So if you're getting ready for a backpacking trip or you're working up to a big hiking goal, or if you've never started and you're like, how do I even go hiking? Um, Barry's your guy and he can help you out. So you can chat with other members of the community, ask questions about like what to pack, how to plan, um, what weather apps is Barry looking at these days? Um, Cause weather is a big part of planning your hikes. You don't want to get stuck out there in the middle of a thunderstorm on top of a 14 er in the middle of summer in Colorado, things like that. So we have a bunch of great meetings each week. And so everything that I just talked about, that can be a, that is a perk of all the levels of our membership. So we start at $11 a month and that gets you in the virtual campfire VIP and then the summit circle programs um, with the weekly affinity group meetings. And then for $33 a month on our Redwood plan, you get the virtual campfire VIPs. You can join us for the summit circle meetings every week. And then we also have a monthly workshop series for the Summit Circle Month. Our theme is Grateful for Change. Next month is Self Love is Community Love and so on and so forth. So each month we have a theme for the campfires and we also will do a workshop that is aligned to that theme. So you can look forward to that on the $33 a month plan. We also have Blaze Your Own Trail to Self Love starting as a monthly program as well. So I mentioned we offer this as a 12 week intensive. That is kind of like drinking from a fire hose. You are ready to heal. You're ready to and roll and you dive straight in. We also now offer that as a monthly workshop. So in our 12 week program, there are 12 modules. We introduce a new activity every week. And in our yearly workshop program, we do one workshop per week. So it's a little bit of a slower pace, gives you a little bit more time to breathe and work with the activities. And also if the 12 week intensive is time bound or financially bound for you, then this offers you a way to kind of spread it out and make it a bit more affordable. So those are available as part of that membership. And then if you join our Sequoia plan every year is it's a uh, $333 a year, you get all of the things we just talked about. So virtual campfire VIP, summit circle affinity groups, the summit circle a monthly uh, workshop, blaze your own trail, monthly workshop and then you also get an annual membership to trails pro and you also get the let your light shine package which is our sorry no go in the dark bottle hat sticker trail journal and our aromatherapy candle that's in partnership with sway candles so we are really excited to um, open this program up in february and i am really the thing i'm most excited i think about it is just to grow bring the community together in this way every week, no matter what's happening out in the world. So one of the things that we learned in 2020 was, oh my gosh, we have to do virtual. And I continue to be surprised by how amazing virtual gatherings can be. And I'm really, really just honored and stoked um, to be hosting this space and facilitating this space for the community and with our alumni. One of the things that I've said from the beginning is that it's bigger than hiking my feelings. There's a lot of activities that can get you to that place of mental clarity that I find on the trail. And also there are a lot of people that have been through a lot of things and this has always been bigger than my story. We leave with mine because that's the only one I can tell really. But um, one of my goals with Blazer and Foremost to strip away all the things that just aren't true. The things, the lies that have been holding us back, the projections and fears and insecurities that we internalize from other people so we can get to what we actually want to be. Um, and when we do that, we kind of start to have a little shift in what we want to do with our time and talent on this planet. So my thought for Blaze Your Own Trail was always that this could be a program where you come home to yourself, but you also discover what you want to do for yourself. Um, and whether that's a new hobby or a new 
um, business or something like that, you could start that here. And so it's a soft place to land and a firm place to lom. And we're really excited to open the doors on February 1st. So if you are interested in learning more about the Summit Circle, go to hikingmyfeelings.org and you can sign up to learn more there. We also have a highlights on our Instagram account so you can learn more about the different tiers and rock and roll with us starting February 1st. So my next guest is here. Kareem, what's up, my friend? I'm going to give a beautiful introduction. Your bio is ridiculous. It's a lot about Arise Roots, but... I think people should know what we're dealing with here. So this is Kareem Israel. He is the front man of Arise Roots. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background about Arise Roots, and then we're going to learn a lot about Kareem tonight. So Arise Roots was formed in 2010 with the intent to create a new and unique Roots reggae band, which reflects their collective passions. Rising up from the streets of Los Angeles, the band had one goal, create a fresh reggae sound with a modern feel that appeals to all walks of life without compromising the true feel of Roots reggae. The all-star cast of musicians was recruited for their talent and appreciation of classic reggae styles. After a vigorous search, this sounds like American Idol. This is a wild, a vigorous <laughs> search. <laughs> Arise Roots became host to six extremely talented individuals, I will confirm that that is true, who had already made a name for themselves performing in numerous local reggae bands, as well as backing various reggae legends touring through Southern California, with veteran Blake Colley holding steady on the drums, Rudy towering on bass, Todd adding his trademark mix of keys and harmonies, the band secured a dynamic rhythm section. Chris was called upon for his impact rhythm guitar and so soulful backing vocals while leading guitarist Robert adds his unmistakable signature style of riffs and licks. Ladies and gentlemen, lead vocalist Kareem Israel coming from a lineage of Jamaican vocalists was added to the group providing his raw sultry flow which perfectly pairs with his powerful lyrics. As today's <laughs> reggae music scene has branched out into multiple subgenres, Southern California's Arise Roots has helped keep the ever-evolving sound of reggae music grounded with their fresh take on Roots music. The true essence of their music is caught in their live performances, so make sure to keep an eye out for Arise Roots coming to a city near you when we can gather again soon. Yay! If we can gather again soon. Oh my gosh. <laughs> One day. One day. One day. What's that going to be like? Oh my gosh! You know what? I, I've I've actually had dreams about it. Yeah, yeah. tell me about I've, it. I've, What's I've, your dream? About, Walk about me through it. What's the, your first concert first, like so, when you come back? So the first concert, the, the, my my last dream was like this. So um, and for some reason, there's always like a snag in in like in like the plans. Like like the the whole show is is, is there. Everybody's ready, and I'm on the way, and something happens where I get like a flat tire or I can't like go like right at the time I'm supposed to go and, and, and like the anticipation and the anxiety and everything is just going crazy. And then finally I get to the stage and, and then we do our thing. And it always ends up something kind of like that with some kind of snag that kind of holds the whole thing back. And I get sad, I get mad, I get frustrated, all those, you know, all, all of the emotions. And then it finally happens. And so uh, I don't know what the first time is going to be like, but, but hopefully it could be something like that without the, uh, without the snag. So, so we shall see. Yeah. And so you, you guys came out with a new album last year, Pathways, and you did a virtual release party and you got to do exactly zero live performances for that, right? Like with fans in front of your face. <laughs> yeah. How was yeah. that? Like, yeah. no, like it, you've been was, doing this for a minute. What was it like to have a was, release and do nothing with it? The whole thing was, was it, it was a lot longer and a lot bigger than just the uh, the actual release date so because you know we, we had the the album was actually finished um we had had the album done for um man some maybe a, at least a good six to, to nine months uh before our before our, our initial release date which was about another four months from you know before when we actually released it and so after we finished the album we, we shopped it around and, and then uh we landed with ineffable records and so shout out to Ineffable Records and all those guys over there. Yeah, that's a good uh, yeah, crew. Yeah, big, big crew over there. And so we, um, we, we linked up with those guys, and they, they, uh, they, they gave us uh, like a, um, a strategy, like a, a release strategy. And so in the in the in the strategy, they were saying that what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this you know perspective date, and we're gonna release as many singles between now and then. And so it, it was it was cool, and it, it was right at the beginning of when the um, of when the pandemic was hitting and so we were like okay so the, the biggest thing was okay are we going to release it are we not going to release it like so after we kind of get through these series of of singles um uh then then you know then, then the 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 covid thing hit and so we were like well shoot do we 
do we just shelve it all right now? Do we continue to release singles and then just release the whole album as just singles one by one? Uh, so we were trying to figure that whole thing out in, in the midst of all of that. After we were about maybe five or so singles deep, we just made a decision to uh, with the the label to just release the, the album and just, you know, hey, let's, let's just do it. Like the people are asking for the album. So um, let's just release it. You know, we wanted we wanted to do the vinyl. We wanted to do the you know all, all of the whole the whole nine. And so we decided to just go with it and just hope for the best. Uh, we were thinking at that time that maybe the, the COVID thing would have been uh, done by the time we finished releasing the singles and, and the album kind of. Uh, had a few months to do its thing. We thought we, you know, we kind of thought maybe the whole world would be better by then, but it it wasn't. And so we were still in that uh, in that valley, uh, trying to get back to some semblance of of, of normalcy. So, but it, it, but all in all, it was cool. Like I, I think that it, it's been a little bit of a blessing and a curse. Like at the same time, there's also been a lot of people at home, and uh, you know, to be able to, be able to to just focus on listening to the music versus being out and about and traveling and doing all this other kind of stuff and and so it, i feel i feel like it did kind of make it somewhat special being that that uh you know people were kind of just just chilling and just you know just just listening to music and so uh I, i'm hoping I, I'm, I'm i'm taking a positive spin on that so <laughs> i'm hoping it, it is the case i'm not going to focus on all of the shows lost and all of the uh, right. all the stuff no that comes point in that, that. Uh, yeah I'm not, I'm not even gonna i can't even allow my mind to even go down that that route because it's, it's too it's too uh it's too crazy it's too crazy so so yeah you're gonna have to wait i have a question it says in your bio that you come from a lineage of jamaican uh musicians talk to yeah. me a bit about that is that where your family's from what's the scoop yeah, right. is that how you got yeah. into music yeah. like what's that's the deal yeah that's um that's definitely how i got into music my dad was a was a, a roots reggae artist uh from jamaica and he actually moved to the states back in the 70s to do music and so um he came out here to do music moved to california and uh my mom moved to california from uh north carolina at the same time and so she actually actually met at a show. He was doing a show. She was doing uh, like some some uh, intern broadcast journalism type stuff. And they went to go cover uh, these um, these Jamaicans playing this reggae music that was uh, that was that was you know fairly new to, to the scene as far as the live component goes. And they met each other. They hit it off. And uh, a couple of years later, they had me. You know, and and I just you know it's crazy that for me growing up, like I never. I never, um, before I moved to California, I, I never lived in a place where the live reggae music scene was uh, in, like, uh, was, was bubbling as it is now. Like what's happened in the last 10, 15 years has been amazing uh, with the reggae scene here and uh, not even just in California, but just ar around the country. But it, it definitely wasn't like that, you know, when I was a kid and when I was growing up. So we didn't have that, those outlets and those, and those places to go and see whatever band was on tour from Jamaica or whatever, you know what I mean? It, it just wasn't, it just, it just didn't happen. Um, and so fast forward to, to coming out to California and, and finding these guys that, that I found that, that eventually became a rise roots was, it was, uh, it was almost, it was a full circle type thing. You know, like I, I was a product of the reggae music scene here in, in Southern California. And then now I'm back in Southern California living and doing the reggae thing, you know, here. So it's, it's life is full circle sometimes, you know? And so it's, it's cool seeing that, that that whole thing can come back around and I can be a part of something that was uh, something that I was birthed out of. So uh, it's, it's been cool. It's been cool. Absolutely. Yeah. That's really cool. It's like a return home in a way. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, it is. I feel very blessed and very So what have do you do when you're not doing music like you uh, yeah. what what's your I'm starting to break up a little bit i think we got a little bit of a delay here but... yeah, it's a little delay a little bit <laughs> <laughs> what what do you do when you're not making music what's your what's your activity of choice uh i am a full-time parent so raising um an 11 year old a nine year old and a two and a half year old um is is quite the full-time job so that is definitely full-time and then i also teach i uh i'm a credentialed special ed teacher mild to moderate um uh special education and so i uh also teach um a class uh here in, in the la area 
now we're online, obviously, but uh, but I, I do that as well. So uh, between that and the the fam bam, I'm, I'm definitely kept busy on a uh, <laughs> 100% of the time, basically. Oh, I guess we lost Sydney and I'm the uh I'm the uh stand-in host, but I'm really not good oh, at this. <laughs> hey, I wanted to ask you a question since I um yeah. somehow got the floor. Um is, is your dad still with us on this planet? Does he still make music and did you ever get a chance to make music with him? Say that part say that last part one more time. I was just wondering if your dad was still here on the planet with us and if you ever had yeah. a chance to make music with him. He is. He lives up in uh, the San Francisco, Oakland area. Uh, we haven't had a chance to to record together, but we did get a chance to um, to, to be on stage and 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 rock the mic together one time uh, a couple of years back in San Francisco, uh, which which was a, an, an amazing experience. Amazing experience. But ho hopefully, hopefully one one day soon I, I can get him get him on on a uh, on a recording. That, that's one of my dreams. So hopefully we can make that happen. All right. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Sydney's back. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, man, you guys are killing it on the picking up where Sydney drops off. I really yeah, appreciate you. <laughs> that, was, that was flawless right there, man. Man, was... just like swooped in. Thank you, sweet. <laughs> it was like butter. I like that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you're a full-time parent and you also uh, work in special education. So how has that been um, with everything going online? Like, how are your students doing? Yeah. Uh, it, it's 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 a huge adjustment. It's an adjustment for everybody, for, for for the students, for the kids, for the parents, for us at home, for the teachers, for you know, because th there's no separation now. There's no separation between your workspace and your home space. So it's uh it, it's 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 pretty crazy. It gets it gets it gets pretty crazy. Yeah, I can imagine. I know um, one of our community members that's on the call today, uh, Mary, her husband also teaches special education. So I know that they've got their own. It's a whole world out here <laughs> for <laughs> teachers of all of all kinds, for sure. Um, so since this is the virtual campfire and the idea behind our show was um, we had a tour that got canceled not musicians, but we go around the country slinging hope and hikes. So, yeah. um, when our tour got canceled, we were like, Hey, let's, uh, let's start a virtual campfire, and, like recreate the energy that we would feel around a campfire. So right. if we were sitting at a campground around a campfire, do you have any campfire stories from tour or a show or your life that you'd like to share? Uh, you know what, <sighs> man, where, where'd I even begin? Um, <laughs> I've got yeah I've 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 got there's so many that are that are floating around goodness gracious um let's see let let's uh I'll give you two of them that were actually around campfires I'll, I'll keep it I'll kind of try to narrow it down so one campfire experience was our first time playing uh Cali Roots uh this was back in I believe 2000 maybe 14, 15 or so, somewhere around there. And um, man, the, the, the experience of, of doing the, uh, the, the camping thing where they have the, the artist camping in the back. And so we had our, uh, we had our big bus that, you know, at, at the time. And so being able to be back there and uh, I don't know if you've been back there or if anybody, anybody's listening that's been back there, but it's like, um, it's like a, a big community type thing. Like everybody's got their little, little areas and little spots all around the place and you know you might have like two or three or ten people over here and then another two or three or ten people over here and you might have like 20 people over here and then another you know and so they're all over the place just just leave them just leave them and so um the, the kids are in the background desperately trying to be a part of this interview just so you know they're it, bring them it, on man make it happen oh, they are, it's a family it, affair it's a ruined <laughs> old thing they're like oh yeah that's that's right up our alley and so uh so that my first experience there is is there you know there actually was a campfire and being around that with a, you know a, a bunch of the, the different artists and friends and family and people who i've worked with people who i've admired people who i've listened to people whose who cds that i've bought and people who are all these different you know all these different things and we're all just kind of here in little separated little splinter cells all over this this big area um and and just for the first time of me being able to, to kind of have that experience was just 
it was uh, it was amazing. It, it was amazing. It was freezing cold outside. And so having the fire and, and the warmth of the fire and then the, the warmth of, of the people and the, the just the, the vibe of the, of the people that were there and everybody's having a good time and nobody there's no uh, like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to sing this song by the campfire. I'm going to try to outdo you and nobody's going to try. It's just, it was none, none of that. It was just it was just fun. It was just like old school, just fun. Like I'm here with a bunch of the homies uh, and we're just having a good time in front of the campfire. So uh, the first time playing Cali Roots, that was one of the my my most awesome around the campfire moments so there's one do we are, do we are we doing more than one or should we, should we stop with yeah. one or hit it keep going i like it all right um another campfire story is when we were on tour uh i think it might have been with it was either tribal seats tour or i can't remember but anyway we were going through the midwest and um, we had a, a few days layover. And so we stopped in Iowa. We'd never been to Iowa before. And we stopped in an area called, uh, I'm not sure if it's Solon or, or uh, Salon, um, S-O-L-O-N, Iowa, basically. And uh, so we stopped and we get there and it, it felt like it was something out, out of a, a movie where this 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 hippie looking van pulls up and all these, this, 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 this crazy group of guys comes out all different colors black latino white half of them have half of us have dreads the other half didn't we're looking all like we haven't bathed in a couple of days like we're just looking so out of place and i felt like when it was getting we walked into we walked into a, a bar the first thing we did was walk into a bar and i swear it felt like in the movies where you hear like the the, rec, the record stop like, and everybody stops and looks like just looking at us and i'm seeing the cowboy hats and i'm seeing all the flannels and i'm seeing all the whatever we walk in and it's like, as we're walking through the place, like all the eyes are just looking at us like you are definitely not from around here. <laughs> so it was uh, it was cool, though. Like it wasn't like, a, you know, it wasn't a, uh, we didn't feel like in danger or anything like that. It was just you could tell that, that they that it, it, we weren't from there. <laughs> and so um, I struck up a couple of conversations with, with some people there. And within like 10 minutes, we're, we're uh, gone and a family invited us to their farm to go and like pick corn. It, it was like corn picking season, I guess, or whatever the case is. So we went and got a boatload of corn from, from this family. They were amazing. So, you know, super nice. Uh, like I said, just, you know, within however many minutes of, of being there, you know, we befriended this, this family and they're, they're, we're at their house now and their farm picking corn. And so later on that night, uh, we got a chance to, to have this, this big cookout bonfire type thing at our campsite with, uh about 38 pounds of, of corn that we cooked up and it was just it was broke out the guitar and the whole nine and we wrote a couple of songs that 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 night and it was just an amazing experience in, in the middle of Iowa our first time ever being there had no you know had no idea what to expect and it ended up being a really uh a really amazing experience so that's so cool yeah uh do you remember the songs that you wrote there and have any of those been released uh two of them I remember writing there and neither one of them have been released. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, the, the whole songwriting thing is, is so it's, 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 there's so many songs that, that are on the, the cutting room floor, yeah. you know, out of all the songs that, that people actually hear there, there are at least another 10 times that amount that are just kind of floating around in space and in no man's land and half of it in one person's brain and the other half in another person's brain. And, and, you know, it's just, it's just kind of the it comes with the territory, yeah. um, so that's you know maybe one day one of one of these these songs will will uh, will reappear. Uh, I'm hoping because one of them I was really digging, so so we shall see. <laughs> when it does come out, I'm gonna remind you. Hey, you remember what I was telling you about yeah, that? Yeah, please do. Yeah. I'd love, I'd be like, this is the corn song, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the corn song. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So. Is there anything in the world going on today? I mean, there's a lot going on in the world, but is there anything like on your heart and mind that you just like, if you had a magic wand and you wanted people to understand it better or fix yeah. it, like, what would that be? What's going on in your world? Yeah, uh, that, that's a that's a, a, a fairly easy question for me because it's something that I think about a lot. And um, I made a post uh, yesterday of some of the um, song lyrics from the song Fade Away. And um you know, when, when we when we wrote that song, it was man, this is the song was actually written, uh, I'd say maybe about two, three years ago. And so, um, you know, we, we didn't I feel like what's happened in the country and what's happened in politics 
between three years ago and now, like I feel like the the, the tensions and the how volatile things are now has just gone completely like this since uh, since we wrote the song and uh, we had no clue that that those words would um, be as poignant as as they are now and uh, as important as they are now. But you know, here we are, and uh, I, I definitely feel that the the message behind that song and those words is still you know extremely true. Um, the thing is, we're never, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, uh, there, there are always going to are always going to be differences between you know opinion and whatever the issue is, whether it's something small, whether it's something big, from uh, you know what, what's the, your favorite pizza place to abortion. You know what I mean? Like no matter how the level of whatever of, of a question or, or a topic, like there's going to always be so many different you know opinions and stances on that thing. And so, being that no two people on in in no two people on on Earth will agree on every single thing, you know what I mean? That whether it's uh, whether it's it, it, you could be twins with somebody, it could be your best friend, it could be your spouse, it could be your brother, your whoever. Like you're you're never gonna agree on every single thing uh, in life, and that's just that's that's inevitable. We're 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 everybody's different, and so with that, if that's the case, then being cognizant of those differences and being cognizant of, okay, I can disagree with, with whatever you're thinking about, whatever it is, something as light as what you want as a pizza topping to something is whatever is politics and faith and religion and the whole nine. Like I can disagree with you on whatever that thing is without hating you. I can disagree with you on whatever that thing is without attacking you because you believe or think or view things differently than I do, you know? And so I feel like if, we were all able to just kind of have that as our base going yes. into and that, that as our base going into interactions, that it would just make so many things so much more, um, just so much easier to deal with it, it, it. So much less stress. So many, I think that we'd be able to get a lot more things accomplished. Um, it just, it's, it's because what happens is when, when, when you don't do that and it just, it get it just goes more and more and that, that, that snowball just gets bigger and bigger and bigger uh, and it, it's, it, it only, it only has the, the power to, to be more destructive as it gets bigger. And so, um, I really believe like if we were able to just have that mutual respect, uh, as humans for what, what, on whatever issue, at least have the respect to understand that, okay, you believe differently than I do. And you're entitled to that belief and that opinion and that whatever. And cool. Like, I don't have to hate you for that. You know, right. like I have to want to wish death upon you and your children and your, like, I, it, it doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be that uh, it doesn't have to be that big. And I know that there are a lot of entities out there that like to kind of fuel that fire and, and keep things going. And, you know, it just sucks that so many people are uh, kind of caught caught up by it. You know, it, it's it's um, but, you know, that, that that's a that's a wish. That's a, if I had my magic wand, like you said, if I could just boop and, and make it happen, then that, that would definitely be one of the things because differences are always going to be with us no matter where you are. Absolutely. And for everybody that isn't following Kareem, I'm going to read or you can sing whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read the lyrics uh, that you posted just so people have a frame of reference to it says if we agree to disagree respectfully, then possibly we could remedy humanity. I believe that love will always conquer hate and one day what separates will all fade away. It'll all fade away. And I think that's something that especially I love. I feel like that's more represented in uh, roots reggae music than it is in like, and this is not to diss any of the offshoots of reggae music because I love all of right. them. There's a place right. for all of them, right. but that's so one of the reasons why I love Arise Roots and I love your lyrics and I love that genre within reggae um, because it is bringing light to these things and it is rooted yeah. in struggle and politics and oppression and Right. I just got to know, like, as an artist, especially as a black frontman in a Southern California scene where there's a lot of white folks making this music, like, and a lot of the fans are white, what is it like when people get all up in your business and tell you to leave politics out of it when that is the entire root <laughs> of reggae? Like, how yeah. how do you deal? Like, because I, I agree with you 100%. Like, the there is so much, we have so much more in common than we do different. If we look at the whole spectrum of humanity, right. like, and one of the reasons why I love this community within the Hiking My Feelings family is like, we celebrate 
our differences. And one of the things that we all have in common is trauma because every single human, Everybody. regardless of what your life experience is, has survived something. And the worst day of my life may be very different from the worst day of your life, but we're both still here. Right. So that's the root of everything we're doing. Like, how do you, if you could say, like, if, if somebody came up to you and was like, Hey, leave politics out of it. Like, what's your response to that? Cause that, that is the music as far as I can see. Well, the, the first, the first thing that, that, that I think of when I hear that comment and I've heard it uh, too many times. Um, but it, to me, it, it kind of locates where that person is for me more than me now taking ownership of those words that they just put out. You know what I mean? Like to, to me, that it is just like that, that just shows me, you know, what, what you're um, that you, you know, might not have the, the, the greatest understanding and in the, in the, in the depth of understanding with a lot of things, you know, and that's putting it really nicely and diplomatically. Um, you are such a saint. I'm just going to like, I got to stop you there. Like slow clap. <laughs> It's not easy. Like what, what, what I say and then what I'm thinking are, are two, like they're not the same thing all the time. But I know that by the time it gets from here down to here, it's, it's passed through a few filters to get to here. And I know that my words, uh, I'm, I'm responsible for them. And I know that, that they, they have uh, power in some places. And so, you know, I, I'm, I try to be as responsible as I can with my words. Um, but the, the raw um, the raw reaction is, is definitely there. And the, the, I can't believe this person is this ignorant to say these words, you know, like that, 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 that and you know, it, it gets real deep, you know, it gets very deep and, you know, it's, um, it's one of those things that, that if I could change, I would, you know, if I could kind of ensure that people had that, uh, that depth of understanding as their, uh, traversing through this land of reggae. I, you know, I wish I could make that happen for everybody, but you know, everybody's in a different place. Everybody came to, to reggae in a different place. I gotta always remember, you know, some people's introduction into uh, reggae music and into the scene could be uh, a certain band or a certain type of band that has nothing to do with uh, struggle or oppression or any of that kind of stuff. And so them coming into it is already kind of in a different position, in a different place, you know, and, and I understand that and I get that. And truthfully, like I, I, I don't down any um, subgenre of reggae music because I feel like if, if uh, it all makes the ground fertile for 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 reggae lovers anywhere, you know what I mean. So if your yes. your if your introduction to it is through this certain band or this certain type of subgenre, then maybe in the next couple of months or the next couple of years, or the next couple of hours, who knows? Maybe you know you will be able to, to get deeper into knowing some things and understanding some things and maybe viewing things in a different kind of way or you know, allowing those things to kind of to to kind of illuminate inside of you, but you know, uh, so and I give people that 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 chance that and that space and that freedom to do that. So I don't I don't want to say, oh, well, how could you ask that question? You're such a yada yada yada, and then just write the person off. Like I might think that, you know what I mean? But at the same time, like I, like I said, I, with with the filters, I, I I put it out there in a way that it's 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 um you know I I definitely like to make people think versus uh trying to to argue with somebody for the sake of winning an argument. Cause I feel like when you talk about an issue for the sake of winning uh, argument, you could lose the person for the sake of winning an argument. And that, that's not the, that, that's not, that's, that, not, that, that, that's how we but, got here. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and I think too, like, I, I think it, it recently occurred to me and this just goes to show like everybody experiences music differently. Like I pay attention to every word of every song I've ever yeah. heard ever like I remember lyrics from songs from then like from when I was a child and that's just how I experience music like one of the things yeah one of the things I love about the genre though is like the music itself like the instrumentation of it and I don't know all the fancy industry words so I might be butchering this but like the actual music makes you feel like you're on vacation or sets your body at ease like the frequency is such that it calms you down and I yeah. think that attracts a lot of people into this and they don't yeah. experience the lyrics. Yeah. Like the biggest change I for agree. me lyrically was after I got done. So this whole organization started because I went and hiked across Catalina Island, had my entire life changed. And then mm. I came back and as a result, like I was already a fan of like stupid and stick figure and all that stuff. But I sat down and I listened to every song that stick figure had out. And I read every lyric as I listened like wow. yeah and I was just like 
oh well no wonder I love this music so much and then like uh-huh. that that's how I experience music like it used to be I'd get a cd I'd flip open the book I'd sit down I'd listen and I read as I listen and so I think a lot of it too is just like my husband he's like I can't watch musicals because I listen to music I don't hear words and I was like, wait, you like, what, <laughs> what? And I was like, and it makes sense because like, if you listen to music and people are singing and trying to tell a story, then that's a completely different experience if that's not how you experience right. music. So right. I was like, oh, well that explains why a lot of people are attracted to the genre, but might not understand where it comes from because they yeah. don't hear lyrics or they yeah. don't like yeah. deeper yeah. thinking yeah. comprehend. Yeah, yeah. That, you, you hit the nail on the head it's it's uh you you put it you described it uh perfectly and i I believe that that that's the case with with a lot of people and and even with that like i don't i don't knock anybody for that being there and there's uh, nothing wrong with it it. right like you know there's i I don't you don't have to go deep on every single song and and having to like to unpack the 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 issues and the the (laughs) jokes of society with every like it doesn't nah if you just want to put on the song and just vibe out to it chill or whatever like that's awesome you know what i mean like there, there's no there's no harm in that whatsoever uh so yeah I, I never i never down anybody for that uh the only kind of issue that i have is when that crosses the line of now you now using your uh voice or your whatever to kind of discredit or to kind of um kind of pull the, the rug from under uh people who are like um you know using their voice and using this this reggae music to be uh, a force of, of change and changing the status quo, whether it comes to uh, politically or uh, socially, uh, racially, whatever the case is, like, you know, don't, don't, if, if, if your cup of tea is, is not to, 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 you know, to be into roots reggae music, then at the very least, to keep your mouth shut, if you're saying, oh, well, why do you got to be blood? Like, nah, just, nah, just, just go chill. You know what yeah, I mean? Go, yeah. Spark go it up chill. and put it on. Yeah, spark it, yeah. <laughs> to yourself spark it up and chill yeah. we can we can yeah. to do that. you know what i mean yeah absolutely so what uh were there any lessons that you learned in 2020 that uh surprised you that you're taking with you into this year uh yes that everything we know is um is fragile and is potentially a vapor life is a vapor you know everything that that we know can be changed extremely quickly and um I didn't realize, before, you know, you kind of, you've heard those words before, so you always kind of know it kind of in the back of your head, but once you live it, once you see the world change in front of your eyes, then it's like, oh, wow, this is, this is real. Like once you, you know, lost friends and family to something that just all of a sudden is just here now and it's boom and things are just like, wow, like things really are different. Like, you know, this certain person really would have been here if it hadn't been for, for this, you know, whatever is going on right now. And, you know, just, everything that comes with it, you know, it, it changed everything for me. It made me realize that even when it comes to the music, like the music is, is the music can even come and go to a certain extent, you know, the, the um, music itself is still here, but everything that goes with it, you know, the shows and the being able to travel and the different things, like the different components that are a part of, of, of life. And, you know, I, I, I wouldn't have, have imagined that not going to a show would have had this, type of effect on me as much as it has but it really has like same it, it really has had an effect on me and i really feel it um there's been you know i've, I've woken up uh out of dreams and, and with tears in my eyes before because it, it's it's uh you know the in the dreams like i felt like um like it was just never coming back and it's just never whatever I, you know i can't remember exactly what the whole dream was about but i do remember that feel like oh my god it's like it, it's, it's it's gone and that that sadness feeling is like a kick in the gut um so just knowing that that everything can change everything can change and so for me whatever those things are that that you hold dear and that you stand on as a person your beliefs your uh uh, for some people it's their religious for some people it's their faith some people it's their spirituality for some people it's their whatever you have you know um like those things that that are are connecting you to your existence on, on this earth um those are are those have to be shored up and those have to be you know they have they have to be um tended to because uh of this other stuff that we can see it can easily be here today and, and gone tomorrow so that that definitely changed my perspective on a lot of things yeah i whew, yes sir 
Were you guys planning on touring with Pathways before or did that all kind of come? Because you mentioned like you were releasing singles like right as COVID hit. Was there a plan to go tour yeah, with that music had, or? Yeah, definitely. We had a tour. We had a tour uh, already planned. It was already booked for March and April. Yeah. And so um, it was already like the the venues were already set. The, the, the all the, the business part was already done. Like it was it was a done deal um and then so we were doing that one and then we were going to have released the album and then we were, we were already in the process of, of setting up another tour for right after the album dropped um but obviously that, that you know it, it just we could we didn't even get to the the planning phases of those because of everything that happened so um so yeah we had one plan for before the album release and we had one plan for right after the album release um, so are you guys are you guys looking ahead to do like start kind of prospecting a tour for when things open or is it just like you got to kind of wait and see like what's the what's yeah. the scoop with the rise roots so, so much so much stuff right now is is just still wait and see like there's we had to cancel um uh, some shows recently we had a a show scheduled in in florida and uh we had to cancel just because of the whole you know the covid thing and, and everything that's going on the numbers it spiked up like crazy right when uh we were in the in the process of finalizing the, the uh, flight plans and the whole nine and so it's just like man like here we go again where this stupid COVID thing is, is, is hitting us right, biting us right in the butt again, you know? So um, we're at the point now where uh, we've had, we, we actually have offers that, that are kind of steadily kind of trickling in, but as each one of them has come over the past, however many months, like they've also been canceled over the past few months. Cause it's still, it just hasn't, they try to project it far enough out so that when we get there, it'll, it'll be cool, but it just hasn't, it hasn't gotten cool to the point where it, you know, it makes sense for everybody to go and, for everybody to feel safe and the whole nine. And so it's just, it, it just keeps getting, uh, uh, it keeps getting kind of, uh, it's like a rotation type thing. Like it, we, we lose one and then another one comes up on the horizon and that one comes and goes and then another one comes on the horizon. So we're just kind of playing the waiting game right now, which sucks. Yeah. But, <laughs> You're telling me we are yeah. ready for music. The yeah. whole world is like needing it more than ever. I think right now. Um, yeah. So if there was one thing that you could do, this year to just feel a little sense of normalcy because obviously the world's never going to go back to what it was before this happened like i think we know that at this point um but like what would be your dream for 2021 if you could just like have a little taste of something normal (laughs) as far as music goes what would that look like for you yeah there's nothing there's nothing uh bigger and better than me than, than a show whether it's a small one i love the small shows as well as the big big time festival so even if we can't do the you know the big on however many thousands of people in the festival at, at the very least if we can just do the small shows like the you know the just the 100 and, and lower if we could just do venues for, for where the 100 people are lower like if we could just have that back oh oh just that just that one thing if we could have that back oh my gosh I'd walk. I'd walk to the shows. It doesn't matter where it is. I right. walk. Up if we could just get one, man. If we could just. Oh my goodness! If we could just get them back, just the, at least the small ones. I, I'd take it. And I wasn't going to completely like derail our entire conversation um, with this next question, so I saved it for the last. But Kareem, um, I need you to know how much I need to meet Kelly Clarkson, and <laughs> you recently did a commercial with Kelly Clarkson. So like, I need to hear yeah. a little bit about that. And then we need to devise a plan on how we like cook Sydney <laughs> up to get on that show or something. <laughs> Man, you know what? I, I've always been a Kelly Clarkson fan. You know, she, her, I think her voice is amazing. Uh, I mean, when, when we got the, um, when we got the audition. Uh, so, I, okay. So I'll even, even back up a little bit further. Um, so we've been doing this, this commercial thing for a little while. And um it's amazing. Like before we started to get into it, I re- I didn't really have much of a, an idea of what kind of goes into to booking a commercial or even auditioning for a commercial. Um, but it's extremely uh, it's extremely hard. It, it's you're you're going up against however many dozens and dozens of, of families and people and whatever the case is to even get an audition. And then once you get the audition, then you know after you get the audition, you're now kind of going against another. Maybe it went from uh 36 prospects that to down to like 12 so even now you, you might be like a one of 12 or whatever and then going from there to the next uh, uh level of audition which, which is the callbacks and then you might get down to like maybe like two like maybe between like three and like seven 
you know so by the time you actually get a booking like there's been a lot that is that has happened between just getting the initial uh, uh you know audition notice and now actually being able to book a commercial like it's a lot and so with this particular one um the the time in between was way longer than what it usually is we we, we shot the audition in like september october and then they didn't tell us that we were even close to it until um like maybe november which is super like long um and so they said yeah we're, we're waiting uh we think we want to we want you guys to, to do the commercial but we're waiting for kelly and so we was we, we had no clue who, who kelly was so in the audition we had to like we had to like act like we're at home playing games or whatever the case is and we had to like stop and be like oh hi kelly yeah 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 like a, an imaginary kelly and so we, we, you know, we, we knew that the, whoever the person, the character name and the thing was Kelly, but we had no clue that it was any, any real person. We just, okay, Kelly. And so when then they, when you, when you do a commercial, you have to sign all of these uh, non-disclosure agreements. You can't say this, you can't say that, you can't hint at anything. You can't like nothing. You can't say like, you can't make, make a peep about whatever this commercial is going to be about. And so we knew who it was going to be for, we knew it was going to be for, for Wayfair, but we can't say anything. And so my wife was like, you know what, let, let me just go, you know, go online and try to see like who Kelly, like if there's anybody out there named Kelly, that might be like a spokesperson for, for a Wayfair or something. Uh, we were thinking like flow with, uh, what's the, um, aggressive. We're thinking maybe it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like, okay. Her name is <laughs> Kelly. Oh, thinking like, okay. Yeah. It's Kelly flow, flow, Kelly. Like, yeah, same thing. And so then my wife saw on the thing, like, wait a minute, Kelly Clarkson has a line with Wayfair. Like this might be like, this might be, this might be Kelly Clarkson. We're like, so we're kind of looking at each other like, yeah, but nah, it's not Kelly. It's not Kelly Clarkson. Like, come on, it's not Kelly Clarkson, Kelly. Like, not that Kelly. And then sure enough, the the they were, you know, kind of hit, uh, we were starting to uh, communicate with production. They were like, yeah, so we're waiting for Kelly's availability and yada, yada, yada. Are, are you guys comfortable? And yada, yada, yada. And then they, you know, so we realized like, wait a minute, you're talking about Kelly Clarkson right now. And so, um, it, it was it was and then another thing with commercials you never know if uh if your part that you're going to shoot is going to be with her or you're going to do all your stuff and then she's going to come and do her stuff later and they're not even in the same studio or at the same time like that happens a lot as well so we were like okay we're not going to get our hopes up we're just going to be like because we don't know what it's going to be like and they don't tell you anything so we're going to be like all right well, you know we're just going to whatever so we get there to the shoot date and we're in our trailer and they're you know we're doing signing the papers and all that kind of stuff and they were like uh so i heard one of the production guys and he's like yeah uh, yeah, uh, Kelly should be here in, in about two hours and yada, yada, yada. I was like, wait a minute, in two hours? I'm thinking like, I'm looking at a call sheet, like, wait a minute, we're still going to be shooting in two hours. Wait, wait, so we're going to be at the same time. Like, this is going to the same time. It's the same time. We're going to see Kelly Clarkson. We're going to see Kelly Clarkson. And so right when it became real to me, it was like, oh my gosh, like we get to actually like see her and like, you know, and uh, so when she walked through the door, uh, man, she was, she was, she was super cool. Like, she was so down to earth and she would just thank god i swear so if you were like and she sucked i would be so sad I know, but <laughs> suck for me too oh my gosh but i had but a no, feeling she's like the coolest person ever so thank you for she, the confirmation she, and she also really seeing your face talking about like oh my god it might be kelly i was like i literally <laughs> like that's my face right now just hearing you talk about it so i'm stoked to know that i'm yeah. not the only person that would be that excited about this and kelly, and she's the bomb she's the bomb so when we, she's like She's just like the classic, she's like the classic homegirl from Texas. You know what I mean? Like is this she just that's what she 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 seems like. That's she that's what she felt like. And so that was really cool to see because there there's it, it sucks when when you meet somebody that you really admire and they turn out to be nowhere near like what you and you're like, uh, oh be. god. <laughs> yeah. I, I've had that experience quite a few times, and it's like, oh man, I can never look at the person the same way again. And so, but now that wasn't the case with with, with her. So in in the in the whatever chance that Kelly Clarkson might be out there seeing this by any chance, Kelly, we love you. We, we love you so much. You are the bomb. Let's go for uh, a hike, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, right, and we're gonna order some Wayfair stuff when we get back home. <laughs> That's right. We'll get a new table. Everything's gonna be great. Exactly. What can I fit in the van? Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh my exactly. gosh, I love it. So yes, this is our plan. So if a show, okay, here's how it's gonna happen, Cream. All right. When you have a show, mm -hmm. you invite Kelly Clarkson. Mm -hmm. And you invite Sydney Williams, and then you're like, "Hey!" And then we have a group hug, and then everything's fine. That you know what? The group <laughs> hug is a must, a must, a good like four minute one, like not even like yeah, a little like one. where where yeah. she might be uncomfortable and squirmy, right. but we're yeah. totally right. cool. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love it. 
This plan is happening. Kelly Clarkson, get ready for the best group hug you've ever had in your life. All right. Best of your life. I love it. Um, (laughs) People in Zoom, if you have questions for Kareem, pop on your camera and we'll do some Q&A and then we'll jump into a group gratitude circle. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. You had your camera on first. You got a question? I do. First of all, that story was awesome. I loved watching you. Excited you got that was great. I might even watch that again. Um, so I'm the one that Sydney mentioned. My husband is also a middle school special ed teacher. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Twenty some years. Yeah. So I was wondering, do you integrate your music into your classroom work at all with your students? Uh, you know, I, I, every once in a while I do, and it's crazy that um that my students uh they're so like they're so all about whatever's on the radio. And whatever, like if it's not, if it's not whatever, you know, the the hottest little things on on TikTok and the hottest songs on whatever, like if it's not that stuff, they're kind of like, eh, we don't really want to hear you that much. Like, yeah, we know you're in a band, we know, yeah, but you know, you're, you're not such and such, or you're not this rapper, or you're not, you know what I mean? So they they don't really, you know, um, but sometimes I sometimes I put it on without even telling them, without even telling them who it is or or, or anything, and uh I've, I've learned that 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 is my kind of preferred method uh because then um whenever i do see them kind of they might complain because i'm not putting on what they want to put on but then after you know a few minutes i'll kind of start to see their head kind of as they're writing doing the word their head kind of going or whatever the, the feet start tapping and i like then i i, I don't say anything so i just I, but I know i'm like ah so you do like it you're just not going to say anything about it which is cool with me i'll, I'll take it i'll take the i'll take the, the little the little uh the little flashes of, of gratitude. So I'll, I'll take those all day long. Awesome. Well, I know what a hard job it is. So uh, thanks for doing that. And one more question. What does your shirt yeah. say? It says. What does Awaken it say? the wonder. Awaken the wonder. Cool. Awaken the wonder. Yeah. I like it. I don't even know where I got it from. It's, it's been in my possession for years. And so yeah, I don't even know where I got it from, truthfully. But I like the words, awaken the wonder. I like that. That's a that's a nice phrase to live by. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Laura, do you have a question? Yeah, I was just actually going to ask about your kids. I know you've got a little one, but you've got one that's a little older. Do they yeah. have the same taste in music as you do? And, you know, how do you foster that love of music in general with them? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, my, my daughter is the oldest, and she's... Uh, I, she sings a lot. She sings a lot. And she's, she's at the stage where she doesn't uh, want anybody to hear her. And so whenever I kind of, I, I, whenever I, I, she sees that I'm, that I'm noticing, she sings, she sings, she'll stop, but she sings all day long. So I know that she's really like, she's really into singing. And uh, I'll see if she, she watches a lot of, um, a lot of YouTube videos with, with uh, people who sing and do little vocal things and like the pentatonics and stuff like that. So she's just really in, into singing the vocals. Um, I, she she is um i don't know where she's going to fit into the the music thing as far as her her wants she's uh she's very much so a, a preteen girl and so all of the preteen girl songs that that are, are are popping right now she's all about it like all of the little uh quasi um boy crush emotional type songs like she just she's all over it and so um, <laughs> I, I give her her space to gonna, gonna have her little uh, musical exploration. I don't try to force uh, force reggae on, onto any of them, um, but I do know that they 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 do dig it at least to a, some degree. Like um, I feel like they're 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 uh, they're not as far along it as as I am, nowhere near that. And so I I, I kind of pull them a, a little bit by a little. Uh, but just enough so that they don't fight too much, but enough to like still pull them, you know. So they have an appreciation for reggae, but it's, it's still they're still the, the little uh, preteen teeny bopper type stuff is still like flooding their their eardrums right now. So uh, we're, we're still kind of going through that. Uh, TikTok and Fortnite, I feel like those two things have been just goodness gracious. Like it's everything everything they do any little bit of free time that they, that they get is directly to tiktok and fortnite it's like goodness gracious uh just it's it's crazy seeing these different platforms and avenues that that kids are, are you know have access to now versus how it was when, when, when we were coming up it's just so different it's so different you know and um the it's 
which is, you know, it's cool in, in ways, but it's kind of weird in some ways. But, you know, that, that's, that's life. You know, things change. You know what I mean? So I, I get that. Um, what I do want them to do, but I wish I would have kind of gotten them into it earlier than, than, uh, than now is more into playing an instrument. And so that's something that um, that hopefully we can get back into uh, having some lessons when, uh, you know, when things get back to some kind of normalcy, getting them some lessons with stuff, which we, we've done a few things here and there, saxophone and piano. But I want to, like, do it to the point where it's like, no, it's like I want them to really learn something. And so we shall see. We shall see. We shall see. Thank you. Appreciate of it. Course. Yeah. Very cool. Anybody else have a question for Kareem before we do our group gratitude circle? In the meantime, I'll go ahead and put on your cameras, folks. Let's uh, we'll start getting ready for group gratitude. Um, so, no, I, Kareem, I, 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 where I, I, can I, people where can people find you and follow along and all that fun stuff? Okay, yeah, uh, pretty much. Uh, if you search Arise Roots anywhere, then all of that good stuff will pop up from the Instagram to the YouTube to the iTunes to the Apple Music and the Pandora's and the Spotify's and all that good stuff. So. Uh, arise roots anything and you will see it you will see us and if somebody has never listened to arise roots before and because unfortunately tonight we weren't able to have you sing and i'm gonna have to have you back when you can um Do we it. usually have for the artists that join us on the virtual campfire we usually pick two songs well they usually sing two songs so what two songs should people listen to first from arise roots oh that's a good question um we talked about fade away already tonight so yeah. i'll say way uh fade away is one um another one uh from the album the song that i always find myself listening to more than any other song is here i am and so i would suggest that anybody uh if you're listening to us for the first time to check here i am and fade away those two tunes perfect we'll yeah. add those to our uh, virtual campfire playlist and then we'll have to have you out to the reggae ranch to sing those live uh for us someday yeah, you know what? Shout out to the Reggae Ranch, by the way. Yeah, big shout out, big I, 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 shout out to the Reggae guys, Ranch. Yeah, big shout out to the Reggae Ranch. I, I've talked to those guys a bunch of times, and we, we keep uh, like trying to figure out a time to get out there. And so it, it's going to happen sooner or later. We're going to get out there to the Reggae Ranch and have a good time. So yeah, shout out to those guys. Hopefully it can happen sooner or sooner than later. Hopefully. Absolutely. Hopefully. Yeah, can't wait to get out there. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's a nice place to create and jam and just hang out and listen to good music. So, all, all right. right. Gratitude, people. Uh, let's start with you, Kareem. What are you thankful for? I am thankful for air in my lungs. I'm thankful that my um, for my family. I'm thankful that everybody is in good spirits and in good health, uh, especially now in this day and age. Like I, there, there's nothing that I can think of that I am more thankful of than having them here and with me and, and healthy right now. So I, uh, that's what I'm most thankful of. Beautiful. And Laura S., what are you thankful for? So this is just something random. I am thankful for the Bernie Sanders memes that are going around the internet right now. <laughs> they are just making me happy. Oh, they're so, hilarious, yes. right? <laughs> the one with him, first of all, the one with him sitting next to Big Bird just cracks me <laughs> up. But yeah, they're just, there's so many of them and they just, they're just putting a smile on my face. So oh, yeah. they're, they're hilarious. They are That's really, happy for. <laughs> really delivering on the Bernie memes. I'm so yeah. thankful for the technology that makes that possible. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Thank you, Laura. Maureen, what are you thankful for? That was a good one. That was great. <laughs> so I just want to say honestly that I am so thankful for like the reggae community that is out there. And honestly, I'm one of the lyrics people, just like you, Sydney. So I don't go as far as you do, Sid, but <laughs> Sydney, <laughs> but like <laughs> I'm like, but I really am so grateful for that community. And I really like what you said about your kids, like because I have two kids that are young and my daughter is just starting to learn the keyboard. So it was like cool to do that. And I've heard Silent Night and Happy Birthday. And so like, I really want her to learn some reggae. Nice. <laughs> She's into it totally, nice. but I, it's nice. starting out with those. So I've heard Silent Night like 25 times today. So <laughs> going back in to hear some more. <laughs> so I'm grateful for that because music is, it's, it's great because to share with the kids. And I really, I really think that the reggae community opens it up for the kids to be able to be involved. 
that that's I think that that's a really special thing about this community. I don't know. Am I, can I talk right now? Am I, I'm sorry. Of course. I, yes. Uh, keep it going. Okay, all right. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, for, for me, that that's one of the things that I, I really, 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 really appreciate about this scene is is, is that you can uh, I can listen to all these these different uh, bands out there with my kids at the same time. Like I don't have to to do the earmuff things every two seconds. And you know what I mean? Like I, it's I, it's it's cool. Like it's something that we can both share at the same time. And having that, even even at shows, like being able to to have shows and going to festivals and and whatnot, where you get to see kids and they're dancing and having a good time with with the with the family, like that's something that I, that I wish I had as a kid growing up to be able to go to a, a reggae festival and be able to to you know experience that and enjoy that, uh, you know, with my family with my parents, like so that you know being the kids have that opportunity to do that now, uh, it's it's amazing. So it, I'm very it thankful. It really for, is. It really yeah. is for parents and that yeah. moment and the kids too. It really is. Yeah. I mean, we can all enjoy it. So yeah. I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. Cool. Yay. And missing shows. <laughs> oh my Zach. gosh. Same. <laughs> Bring back music. ASAP. Jody, what are you thankful for? I get to have this opportunity to join a new community of people and never actually listen to reggae because I grew up in a cult, so I didn't listen to any music until I was 20. <laughs> wow. So my playlist is like Whiplash, and I love investigating new uh, musical opportunities. So oh, I will be checking this right out. Place. What's that? You came to the right place. I know. I'm excited <laughs> about this. Yeah. And if you haven't listened to reggae, then I'll be sure to send you a link to our virtual campfire playlist because it's like the best of the people that have decided to spend some time with us here. So it's a really good introduction of the genre and the the people that are bringing good vibes to the place. So, yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Thanks for being here, Jody. Mary, what are you thankful for? Amanda Gorman. She's, uh, I can't get her out oh. of my mind and I'm just her gift of her words and her performance and her story is amazing I right. watched every interview she's done I just I love her I want to stand next to her I want to hug her and I just hope this is only the beginning of what we see from her so I just I could cry thinking about her and I have goosebumps now so I'm really right. grateful that so many of us now know who she is and yeah. um, the words that she shared are just yeah. amazing so yeah blown away yeah 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 i watched uh i watched all of her stories on instagram this morning and she's like it's a picture of her and the obama she's like i'm deceased and then it's like her and lady gaga and then her and j-lo and she's like it is just like it's so beautiful to see the joy of that experience she's like this is me realizing that my book is number one this is me talking to oprah this is me lynn manuel wow. thinks that i'm a legendary poet and it's just like it's so real and that's what i love about it because like you don't have to be buttoned up just because you gave the most beautiful performance of your life like it is totally okay to be overwhelmed with joy and it's just so beautiful to witness and such permission for like everybody to like really lean into I'm guessing that's probably one of the best days of her life. And she is oh, just letting us in on it. And I love that so much. So yeah. yes, I am also thankful for that. Um, cool. Well then thank you everybody for joining us. Um, next week it's me and Barry. We're doing a little recap. Barry never comes on the show. So this is going to be very exciting. We've decided the last Thursday of the month is Sydney and Barry day, which I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea. We'll find out next week, but it's going to be great. And then in February, our new theme starts, which is community or self-love is community love. And we're talking all about how, when we take care of ourselves, we can show up more powerfully for the people in our communities and make that ripple effect of love all around the world, which is what we're all about here at Hiking My Feelings. So Kareem, thank you so much for joining us. It was an absolute pleasure hanging out with you. And to Julie, who was on with us earlier, thank you as well. And for everybody on YouTube,